Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I'm going to be showing you how to transfer photos onto Canvas today. This makes a great Christmas gift. I've already made a few and I'm going to show you how I did it. You're going to need a few products. They're all going to be listed and linked down below. But for starters, I'm starting off with this cam two canvases actually. So I have 8 by 10s I'm doing two pictures, but I'm only going to show you one because the other one is actually of other people. So I'm not sure if they want to have their face splashed all over YouTube. So I went ahead and just showed my family today. You're also going to need some gel medium. I'm using the matte version. I like that better. You could also use gloss. It will work. You're just going to have a glossy finish. You also need laser printer printed images. You can take this to a staples or copy place and do that or you can do it at home. You need to make sure you're getting the mirror image, especially if you have words. So my son has words on his shirt. So whenever I flip this around and put it onto the canvas, if I didn't use the mirror image, it's going to look a little weird. So just make sure you flip that image, make sure you have a mirror image and then print that off to the size of your canvas. So I printed off an 8 by 10 photo. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting this on the canvas. I'm starting with a very thick but smooth layer of the matte gel medium. I'm using the Crafters Workshop gel medium and I am just putting this on. I tried to smooth it out with um, my little brayer tool. That didn't really work out so well for me. So I like to just use my foam brush. You can use a scraper, whatever you have on hand. Just make sure that you get a nice thick layer on there. Make sure you get some on the sides as well. And then just make sure you smooth that out as best you can. You don't want any large lumps, bumps, gaps, hills in your picture because those will show up and they will stay on the canvas. So make sure all those major little bumps are taken out of there. Take your time with this part because this is going to be what sets your picture. So you want to do the best job possible with this. I'll go ahead and just continue to smooth that. You can take off the excess as you're doing this, kind of those hills that you're getting, and that will help smooth it out. I just wipe the extra back into the container because you can keep reusing that. Now once I have that about as smooth as I'm going to get it, I'm going to take my picture and lay it right over the top of that. I'll line up the bottom and then just kind of flip it right over on top. You want to smooth this out. Make sure you don't have any weird bumps or anything like that because again, if you do, it's not going to transfer to that spot or you're going to be left with those bumps. Now I had a few ridges in mine and you'll see that did stay once I did take the picture off later on or the paper off later on. The picture stays behind. But you do end up with those. What I like to do is go ahead and take a credit card or an old gift card and just smooth those down. Now you want to be careful that you're not pushing all of that medium out on to the side so be gentle here. Just press it down into the image. Now set this aside to dry. I let mine dry actually like two days. You can do it 24 hours but I didn't have time the next day so I let mine dry for about 48 hours. 24 hours will be perfect. You can see I've already done one. <laughs> I've got all my little paper bits around. But what you want to do is start off with, a. I like to use warm water. I don't like to freeze my hands. You don't want it hot. You don't want it too warm. You just kind of want tepid. Um, but cold water, it's cold here right now. I don't need that on my hands anymore. So I just did tepid water and a washcloth. You want that little bit of grit to help wipe away the paper. So I just like to take this damp washcloth and lay it right over the paper and kind of get it all damp and soaked. Then you just want to take your washcloth and continue to dampen this paper. You want to get it pretty wet here so you can start to remove and kind of pill up that paper. This is one of the instances where you do want your paper to pill. So I'll continue pressing in water with my washcloth and just kind of rubbing until I feel it start to give. It's harder to explain. It's better when you feel it, you know it whenever you're doing this yourself. So I'll just continue and start to rub. You can use your fingers, use your washcloth, and you can see the paper starting to pill up into little balls and roll away. Now you're going to have the edges along the side. Once you get kind of the whole edge done, that will just kind of tear away and leave behind a smooth edge as well. You want to be careful with this because as you're going through this washcloth, once you get past those first couple of layers, is going to be too rough. 
you're going to want to switch to your hand. So once you start to see that photo pop through and you get rid of the majority of that white cast over the top, switch to your fingers. And I will in just a moment, but I first want to get up as much of that really heavy paper as possible with this. I'll go ahead and continue to dip my washcloth into that paper just to wet the surface and help that paper pill up as well. This is the time again, you want to take your time. I've sped this up quite a bit so you don't have to sit through the whole thing, but take your time. If it gets to a point where it's kind of not pilling up, just let your washcloth sit on top of it. I didn't want it to sit over the whole portion of the paper, so I just let it sit right over that portion with the white cast on it. Kind of soak up that water, dampen up a little bit, get a little bit softer, and then you can come back in and continue to wipe away those white spots. Now I'm getting into the nitty gritty now. So anywhere where there is leftover really thick white space, I'll go ahead and continue to buff that out with my washcloth, but you're gonna need to switch to your hands. You can see in the lower left hand corner, I've already peeled up just a little bit of the picture, but if you switch to your fingers, you have less of a chance of that happening. Now, you will get a distressed look with this unless you are super duper careful. I don't have the patience for that, but if you do, you can get a really nice finished look. I happen to like the distressed look, but you can see I'm getting it along the edges. It's just going to give an old timey photo look. I happen to like it, but if you don't like it, really take your time. Now I'll continue wiping that, and once I get as much as possible off, I'm gonna take and dust off all those little bits and pieces. Now I want to go ahead and set this aside in just a minute once I get all the thick pieces off. That is going to give it a little bit of time to dry. You don't want this completely dry, but you do want to give it that extra little bit of dry time. And that is going to bring all of the white that is left behind up to the surface. This is where you want to switch to your fingers and really start going in. You can re-wet your fingers and start to wet again. But I find once I get this first layer off, I'll set it aside to dry one more time. And then I like to come in without any more water and just gently buff away all those little extra pieces with my You want to make sure you're being especially careful over faces. So make sure to take your time with those. And also anywhere where you've started to get that distressed look, every time you rub over that, you're going to get a little bit bigger of a distressed look. So just keep now here is a final look at this stage. It looks pretty good right now, but set it aside to dry for two or three minutes. It doesn't take long. And as that water dissipates, you're gonna see kind of a cloudy white look come up. And that is where you really need to take your finger and do this final buff to get all of that extra little residue of the paper away so it doesn't look so cloudy on your image. Now just make sure that you're careful. Use your finger to buff away. If you need to, you can bring back in a little bit of water to kind of help move these pieces of paper along and give them that final little buff. But just make sure you're dusting away the extra surface or the extra little pills of paper you're getting. And also keep letting it have that few minutes to dry and then just come back in and buff away any little pieces you might be left with. Here's a closer look at what I mean of that cloudy look you're kind of getting. It's very hard to see unless it's in real life, but once you see it, you'll know what I mean. And it just gives this really cloudy look to your picture. So you want to make sure that you give that final buffing to buff it away. And again, I like to use my fingers. If you're not really keen on using your fingers, go ahead and use a sponge, the very, um, not the abrasive side of the sponge, but the very smooth side of the sponge, and that will do it as well. Now, the last thing you want to do is give this a final thin layer of your matte medium, whether you're using matte medium or the gloss medium, either one will work. Just make sure you give it a final layer so this can be touched and handled, and the picture isn't going to scrape away by any accidents that might happen. Once you have that on, give it a few minutes to dry, and this is ready to go. I love the way this turned out. Here's a few closer looks at it. Now, I've already put this one up on my shelf, and I've made a few more as gifts, but I've also made a few larger ones that I have in my hallway, and I'll show you those at the end of the video. Here's a closer look at that distressed edge you get, though. I happen to like this. If you don't, just make sure you're very, very careful and take your time. Instead of a washcloth, you might want to use a sponge. 
there's a look at it on my shelf with a few more pictures around it. And the final picture is the larger ones I've done. So these I actually had to print half of the photo, kind of piece it together on the canvas and transfer two at a time onto a larger canvas. But I love the way they turned out. They were only a few dollars to make and they're beautiful in my hallway and everybody likes looking at them. That is going to do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There are going to be links on the left side of your screen you can click on. All the supplies I used are going to be listed down in the description box below, as well as my social media links you can find down there. Thanks for watching today and happy crafting.